to commenting with sports and performing arts. Someone gets up on the stage and starts getting very nervous, and they can't perform as well as they ordinarily would, and you feel sorry for them. You said if only they didn't get nervous, they'd be a great pianist or a great sports person. Or when someone loses, say, a sports contest because they got nervous and flubbed things. You always, the question always comes out, well, who really was the better of the two sports people? And that ignores the fact that an important part of being a performing artist or a sports person is your psychology. Your ability to psych yourself up and not be nervous when things get important, not to lose your cool. And so it's not just technique. The psychology behind the technique is just as important. In fact, it's usually because of the psychology that the technique gets perfected to begin with. Same principle applies when you meditate. When things suddenly crash, that's when you see who's the meditator. When it looks like you have nothing left for all your months or years or whatever practice. The intelligent thing to do is just sort of pick yourself up, dust yourself off. Give yourself a pat on the back or a slap in the face, depending on what's needed, and then just go ahead and start all over again. And John Mahabhu has a very moving passage in one of his more autobiographical talks, where he talks about how his meditation would progress, 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 and then crash. And then it would start progressing again, progressing again, and then crash again. He just didn't give up. He kept trying to figure out what was it that made it crash. In fact, it's, it's like distraction. It's going to happen. Wherever there's progress, there's going to be regress. And so if you know there's a potential for regress, you just keep watching. If it's going to fall away this time, how is it going to fall away? Watch for it. See what happens. The, the little unravelings that suddenly lead to larger unravelings. And take it as par for the course. Of course, it's difficult in the sense that the mind that's training itself is also the mind that needs to be trained. In other words, sometimes just as you need your powers of observation most, you need your powers of mindfulness most, that's when everything else seems so weak. It seems really hard to get started again. In which case, you just got to forget about your past progress. Think about it as if it didn't happen at all. This is one of the meanings of beginner's mind, that you don't dwell on how good things used to be and how bad they are now. And also do try to make a sort of a division within yourself between the lousy mind states and the disgust and whatever, and just the observer that's just watching all this and is trying to figure it out. They really do become these two parts of the mind, and you discover that they're there. It's just that at any one time, one side tends to get smothered by the other. So when things are going well, don't be complacent. Don't let down your guard. Know that there is always a possibility for regress. Until you hit the noble paths and fruitions, there's always going to be a possibility for regress. So just watch out for it to see how it might happen. And at the same time, when things go bad, well, if there's regress, there's going to be progress, if you stick with it. A lot, a lot of the problem there is simply impatience. You've gotten used to things going well, the mind's settling down quickly, and all of a sudden it doesn't settle down quite so quickly. And you get impatient, and you get upset. And that, of course, just makes things worse. So forget about your past meditation, how good it was. However good it was, then it doesn't help anything right now. And if it really was really, really good back then, then it wouldn't have regressed. There was still something wrong with it. The regression teaches you that lesson. Lesson. So you've got to watch for where are the where is the potential for regress in the particular mental state you've got when things are going well. And when you've got the other picture. When things are not going well, there's always a potential for progress in there, too. Look for that. Emphasize that. 
dwell on that. Because then you realize the potentials are there, and simply it's a question of which ones you're focusing on, which ones you emphasize. Then it's not hopeless. Just learn to hold on tight to whatever is good within the mind. And as you stay with that long enough, it'll begin to grow, gain strength, and get to the point where it's more in power again. So it's normal for there to be ups and downs in the meditation. The trick is for you not to be up and down. In other words, when things go well, not to get so carried away that you get careless. When things go poorly, not to get so upset that you want to give up. Just stick with it, stick with it. A while back there was an interview with President Clinton. He was talking about what helped him most during the times when everything in the world seemed to be turned against him as Nelson Mandela came, gave him a visit. He said, look, they're going to try to take everything away from you. And keep remembering that they can, whatever they take away from you, they can't take away your mind. And that was what kept the President going. Now here we've got our mind. It seems like the mind is turned against itself. Okay, well, they've got your good qualities. The good qualities are still there. They may be weakened at some times, but they're still there. And the bad qualities can't really take them away from you. The potential for good is always in there. They'll try to bury it. They may try to deny it sometimes. But the potential for good is always there. So you've got to dig down and find it and then latch on to it for all that it's worth. And it's that quality of tenacity that will see you through. So remember, it's not just a question of technique, what you do with the breath, where you focus, this, that, and the other thing. It's also a question of what your attitude is toward the technique, what your attitude is toward success and failure, mistakes and the good times and the bad times. And there's nobody that's hopeless. There's even the case of Devadatta, who, because of what he did to the Buddha, is supposed to boil in hell for quite a while. But the last moment, just as he realized he was getting sucked down into the earth, actually there's a big hole in the ground in Sawati where they say, well, that's where Devadatta got sucked down into the earth. He regretted what he'd done. So that element of regret, the Buddha said, was what's going to be the germ for his becoming a private Buddha someday. So even the, you know, the ultimate bad guy, Mara, is supposed to become a, a Buddha sometime in the future. All the ultimate bad guys in the Buddha stories, they, there's ultimately a good end for them. You haven't done anything nearly as bad as they have. So there's always the potential for a good end for you, too. So keep these thoughts in mind. It's not just the technique, it's also the attitude. It comes down to your maturity. Your ability to deal with difficulty, to work your way through the troughs so you can get back up on the crest again, and not be carried away either by the trough or by the crest, keeping the mind on an even keel as you go through the waves.